Hello, I'm so glad you decided to stop by and build with me. Today we're going to be creating a lovely little path in the dirt. For this build, I'm using the Ash and Texture Pack by user Aimboot. This extra pack allows blocks like dirt, gravel, and stone to blend with ease. To start, take a shovel and mark in the dirt where your path is going to live. It can be as long, short, wide, or thin as you like. Now, give the path some character. Let it wiggle from side to side. My dirt path is rather straightforward, but yours may have bumps and turns. That's okay. It's great that your path has a lot of character. It won't make this any more difficult to build, so let your imagination flow free. Place some gravel in the middle of the path. Don't get rid of all your path blocks. Let them outline and complement the gravel. Leave some gaps in your gravel trail to keep the path looking interesting. Use some coarse dirt to outline the gravel itself. Put coarse dirt in areas where the gravel patches feel too blocky or too wide. This will keep the gravel from taking over the whole build and it'll smoothen out the look of your path. You can go back and replace some of the blocks with regular dirt. If you don't want there to be grass in your path, then make sure not to put dirt blocks right next to the grass blocks, or else the grass will spread onto the dirt. In areas with a lot of gravel piled together, place a block or two of cobblestone in the middle. Gravel will appear to have eroded off of the cobblestone, making the path look old and treaded. I put mossy cobblestone in the areas where Ashen puts a few sprouts of plants in the path blocks. You can use as little or as much cobblestone as you like. Now, pick up some brown terracotta. It is slightly brighter and more saturated than normal dirt, so use it sparingly or it'll eat up your whole path. To start, I put brown terracotta on the edges of my path. You can put it wherever feels right for you. Remember, you're in charge of your own build. Dirt paths are messy and free. Our paths are not going to be the same, and they shouldn't be. It's beautiful that they are all so different. As we're building, you can see that instantly, making use of this texture pack. The grass, the dirt, the gravel, and the stone, they all blend wonderfully together. If you're using a different texture pack or no texture pack, you could choose blocks that blend together just as well. Don't feel the need to switch texture packs just because I'm using this one. Take some leaves and sprinkle them carefully on the outline of your path. You can use whatever leaves you like, and as many or as few as you need. For my path, I'm using birch leaves. I went back over with my dirt, gravel, and stone to improve areas of my path. I relied on just my instincts to decide if a spot needed more stone, more dirt, or no changes at all. Whatever changes feel right for you are the correct changes. Don't let my example say otherwise. If you're already satisfied with how your build looks, then you don't have to change a thing. A great thing about Minecraft is that we can place and break blocks as we choose. That is a wonderful power. You can also use this classic little building trick as using stone buttons on the floor as pebbles. Place them wherever feels right. For me, I put them near patches with a lot of stone and gravel, making sure not to add too many of them. It's also a great opportunity to activate some hidden contraptions. Use some packed mud and granite to add even more interest in between the dirt and the gravel. The colors of these blocks are even more striking than the brown terracotta, but don't be afraid to use them. Be brave. You can also use wood or planks for some extra shades of brown. I chose not to use them for my build, but that don't mean you shouldn't try to use them either. You have the power to break and place blocks. You can always go back and change your mind. Also, place a block or two of cobbled deep slate in areas with a lot of stone. Deep slate is slightly darker than cobblestone. These blocks will vary the grays in your build. At this point, you can call your path done. I used this technique for a path through my wheat field. In that build, I also included mud blocks, uncolored terracotta, ferns, and short grass. Feel free to add your own decorations as you see fit. But if you want to keep going, then pick up some stone bricks and deep slate bricks. Once again, place them in areas with a lot of stone. This is a great way to make your path feel like it was built in a little village town and many people walk across it every day. 
I started by placing stone bricks where I felt they wanted to live. Then, near Cobble Deep Slate, I replaced the regular stone bricks with their deep slate counterparts. Try not to just randomly mix stone bricks and deep slate bricks together. Be mindful of where you're placing blocks. That way, you'll be extra satisfied with the result. It's okay if you find yourself removing a lot of stone or gravel that you had put down before. This is a normal part of the building process. Don't feel obligated to keep them there. You can always change your mind later. Stone bricks have cracked and mossy variants, which are perfect for blending together with the cobblestone and mossy cobblestone. Try to place cracked bricks near cobblestone and mossy bricks near mossy cobblestone and grass. Think about how this build will influence the story of your other builds. Depending on how many stone bricks you choose to use, your path will look more or less weathered. You need to decide how pristine or worn out your build looks. You can fill the whole path with stone bricks and leave little small traces of gravel in the edges and the path will look almost new. And after that, we're done. You've built a humble old dirt path with lots of texture, detail, and careful thought. Thank you for building with me. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.